Thanks for listening to Get in the Hole, your number one stop for all things in the world of golf. Watch and subscribe anywhere you get your favorite shows on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, Google, and more. Just search Get in the Hole. Get in the Hole is the official golf pod of the Underground Sports Philadelphia family of podcasts. Now let's get right into the action. Here's your hosts, Steve McAvoy and Ben Piero. Philadelphia, baby, you're going to love it. Best sports fans in the world. Actually the worst, but that's what makes them the best. And if those two things happen, then things can, things can happen. But right now, um, it's a stalemate because it, there can't be any other way. That is not Rory McIlroy weighing in on the Aaron Judge versus Arson Judge mishap by John Heyman today. That versus was actually the Rory Yankees Rory versus the Giants. Norman. <laughs> versus the Yankees versus the Giants. The best thing was was that there was literally a account created about five minutes after called Arson Judge, and and the only thing that was on the profile was a photo of the burning of Notre Dame, <laughs> with the caption "Yes" in all caps. And I was like, "Oh my goodness, this thing it has not gotten like ten thousand followers in the first five minutes." So yeah, no, that isn't uh, Roy McIlroy weighing in on, on Aaron Judge. It's actually. Um, Rory McIlroy talking about Trey Turner as a Philly. Just kidding. It's Rory McIlroy discussing Greg Norman and how uh, their conversation went. went. We're going to talk more about that later on uh, in this show. We have some more sound bites from Rory as we'll get to. But this is the good whole podcast. I have a second win. I just got home from work. We are real and really good. We have a lot of go- we have a lot going on. Aaron Judge might be a giant. Trey Turner is a Philly. The MLB. Uh, winter meetings is off to a ruckus start, and the Mets so far. Hey, you got Justin Verlander. Like, yeah, I mean it's good. Well, the Mets very well could be a, uh, a geriatric clinic by the end of this week. Who knows? You're just uh, reassembling the 2014 Tigers without Dave Dombrowski. It, it, it's gonna be. It, it's gonna be like if the um. No, you know, it's gonna be like it's gonna be like, like the final scene of Endgame when Steve Rogers is like 85 years old. And, and it's like the Mets. Like the Mets need one of those guys to pitch a big playoff game, and they're going to be like, "No, I don't think I will." Now it's gonna, now it's going to be like, Justin, where are you? For like Game Five of the World Series, I'm over here. He's like in the bathroom, like he's been. In the, he's like coach has been in there for five times the last ten minutes. Now before we get into everything, obviously Texas, New York, big golf states. Oh God, what are your feelings now that Jacob Degrom is no longer a New York Met? I didn't want him back. I feel um, like that's what every Mets fan is saying. You know what it is? I I can't get past the hasn't pitched more than a hundred innings in two Three years. years. Yeah, has not gotten back to that form that that everyone wanted him to be at. The Dodgers are paying him one hundred eighty-five million dollars to hope he's Rangers. Healthy. Rangers. Sorry, the Rangers. Don't put that. Don't put that jinx on us. If you uh, went to the I, Dodgers, you'd win a World Series this year. You're right. The Rangers. I, I'm sorry. I, it still baffles me. The Rangers are, are, are trying to like actually pay guys to win games. They won 69 games last year and spent Six, 68. But 68, and they and they spent 550 million dollars. Like, they spent more than that. Like as a whole, they almost they spent close to a well, billion dollars in well, free agent. Three guys spent for the three key guys that they wanted spent 550 million dollars. Like ludicrous numbers. So what happens when you sign Bruce Bochy to be your manager, though? You you're like pushing your chips in, and saying you're gonna win. I mean, I love. I mean, look, I, I love Bruce Bochy. If it wasn't Buck Walter managing the Mets, I wanted to, I wanted to be Bruce Bochy. <laughs> but yeah, paying him 185 million dollars to hope he's healthy, I'm actually much happier spending the 42 million dollars a year on Justin Verlander, knowing that I got a Cy Young candidate. Um, sorry, a three time Cy Young winner. Yeah. Who's done something at age forty that Degrom hasn't done right now at age thirty five? Like it's like a, it's a give and take, and it's just, it's it's the same thing with like, with Aaron Judge, right? Might go to the Giants. Yankees fans are going crazy. Look, no matter what, I I understand like generational talent this guy is, and he's thirty years old. Thirty one. Think about th- thirty one, but you're gonna pay him for eight years for nine years at forty five million dollars. I get it. The money value is going to get better. But you're going to pay until he's 39? Like, I get it. He's incredible. But at what point does the decline start? 
at what point does this nine-year contract of, oh, my God, we got Aaron Judge turn into, oh, my God, we have Albert Pujols on the roster? I'm, yeah, but, I mean, look, being, being a Phillies fan, having signed Bryce Harper to a 13-year contract and now Trey Turner to an 11-year contract, like, my point of view, and it's pro it's obviously different than what the Giants' predicament is now because they've had one good year, one bad year under Gabe Kapler. Yeah. But, like, the Phillies, like, got to the World Series, and then you go get that blue-chip player that you hope, like, takes you to the mountaintop. And if the Phillies get one World Series, having those guys on the roster, it's win, worth yeah. it. No, and look, but that's what like, the Giants are saying that they're like going to do if they sign Aaron Judge is like, hey, we're going for it. But also the key is here is that, that, that the Phillies, and by the way, to get Trey Turner at $300 million is a steal and a half. Um, talk about A, loyalty, and B, how much pull Bryce Harper has. That's like your answer to all of that. But the, the Phillies already have the proof of – I, could, I, I said it in my group chat after you I said they're teetering on Dodger-esque talent on the offense. Schwarber, despite hitting probably 240 every year, is still going to hit your 40 home runs. Castellanos is a great player. Harper, Turner, Real Muto. Then with the young guys coming out, even Reese Hoskins had a resurging year. So this is a talented offense. And to get Trey Turner at a team-friendly deal where the Padres offered him what? 364 342 i think was the final i, th I think it was even higher than that I, I, oh yeah it was it was 362, 362. because it cleared lindor's contract yeah, and yeah, would have yeah. been the highest pay player like incredible but the giants don't particularly have that their next best player is jock peterson and is he's a free agent oh all right perfect it's mike skremsky is he a free agent too who knows fire san fran like they have Logan Webb. That's really all. It's like yeah. there there isn't much happening in San Francisco. Maybe this is the them showing that oh we do have the money to afford him and we're gonna use him as the set piece. Very well, great. But regardless, I expect Aaron Judge to have two or two bad years under this contract. Like that's guaranteed. Maybe who do you play. think who do you think hits it further? Good good crossover question here. Aaron Judge on the perfect night in San Francisco hitting it out to McCovey Cove or Bryson DeChambeau off the tee? Well, so here's the problem. Bryson hits it 370 off the tee, but it's 370 yards. Judge Fair. hits it 480 feet. I, I need – I don't feet do metrics. I got you. I, got I don't you. do metrics. Give me 370 from yards to feet. Feet to yards. Like One foot is a third of a yard. Yes, I I know that. Thank you. But I'm saying like, what do you, what conversion you want? The 480 feet. Four, well, no, 370 yards to feet. Uh, Did you seriously just ask to do feet to yards? Get the hell out of here. 370 yards is 1,110 feet. You know, it's crazy to think about that. Like, I went to a Jets game recently. And I'm sitting there. I'm sorry. I know. <laughs> it was the Bears game, though, with Mike White. Uh, Great game. Bears. I'm a Giants fan, and watching Mike White throw, th throw three scores to, to Garrett Wilson was, like, amazing. Um, and everyone's like, oh, my God, it's the future. No, it's not. No. Um, Jets fans are delusional. But like, like, I'm sitting there in the 200s, and I'm like, wait a minute. I can hit a nine iron. Actually, no, more, more like a gap wedge. From one end of the end zone to the other, a football field feel, feels way longer than your standard par three. Way longer. I don't understand how, like, maybe maybe it's like like visual distortion or like because Probably. on the golf course it's, it's like undulated to go like down or up or uphill or downhill, whatever happens to be. But like, and a golf course is more open. Like the stadium obviously has like the seats yeah, but... and everything around it, and it's in that like cookie cutter like length yeah to but, where but, like but there's standing, nothing else to but standing at a goal post and looking at the other goal post it feels like it's at least 200 yards it's a depth perception thing too not i think that, it is like... yeah more than anything else but yeah like that answers your question i mean bryson hit, bryson hits it bryson hits a golf ball double what what now uh, reverse it, it out. how far do you think deshambo hits a baseball and how far do you think judge hits a golf ball 
I've thought of this a lot because I watched a video. Uh, it was a pro am. I think at Pebble Beach, and TJ Oshie of the Capitals hit hit driver. I think three fifty. Now TJ Oshie for a, for a little bit back when he was like Olympic Oshie, uh, was one of the fastest slap shot shooters in mm-hmm. hockey. Um, then again, he also made like perfect contact and it went dead straight. So like. I've always wondered what it would be like to watch athletes in baseball and hockey play golf full time and then watch golfers play, play baseball. I can almost guarantee you the golfers would, would flop um, mm-hmm. just because it, it's arguably the hardest thing to ever do is hit a fastball. Like you, you have Zach Wheeler throw at my face and I'm going to miss it every single time. Yeah, and it's totally different from the perspective that if you're hitting a baseball, it's coming at you and not sitting yeah. still on a tee or on the ground. Now, now, like, granted, like, it, is it incredibly hard for Aaron Judge probably to hit totally. driver, being that that he has to actually get the um, the proper mechanic down? Yeah. It very well could be. You, he, he could be slicing it forty yards to the right, but at the same time, though, I think it'd be a lot a lot harder to watch someone like Bryce and try and hit a baseball Agreed. than it would be for Aaron Judge to just just match a golf ball. Yeah, and I think, I think aware, more I'm, time. I'm curious. I think more likely than not, Aaron Judge finds the fairway hitting a golf ball mashing it off the tee than Bryson has any shot of hitting a home run. I, I guarantee you there's a video somewhere of Aaron Judge golfing and I'm like I'm now searching it. Hmm. Well the Athletic actually wrote an article that says Aaron Judge's home runs live golf and the MLB playoffs how they all correlate. Okay. There's um, a video on uh, Roll Your Rock YouTube of Aaron Judge copying the swings of LPGA stars. There's also a video of Aaron Judge at Top Golf. Nice. I just saw that too. That was Aaron Hicks hitting a 330. I saw. I remember that video. With a, with now also you got to realize the he's swinging. Uh, that is that is his own golf club, but but, but a Top Golf ball. And the top golf balls are deadened because mm-hmm. because obviously they want to keep it inside of the netting. Um, so they hit it three thirty. It's really impressive, and yeah, probably, and probably also on a low tee. I think Aaron Judge can easily clear four hundred yards. Yeah, probably. Like like if, like if he if he hits it dead on, I think TJ Oshie when he played in the pro am his his club speed was just about similar to. I think it was Joaquin Neiman, which is like top twenty-five Good on company. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty, pretty raw solid. Then again, TJ Oshie also hit, also hit the hockey puck one hundred fourteen yard, yeah, uh, fourteen miles an hour. So it's like ridiculous. Um, oh yeah, we're we're, we're twelve minutes in, and we haven't even which which leads yet. me to a perfect segue. But Steve, do the intro. Yeah, welcome in, folks, to the Getting the Whole Podcast. Steve McAvoy here on a beautiful world, beautiful world. It is a beautiful world. Beautiful Tuesday in the world of golf, bringing you up to date on everything you need to know right here on Underground Sports Philadelphia. Joining me on the desk once again, Kyle fucking Bennett, back for another round. I feel so revitalized, and it is a incredible golf week. The match is back, and we finally, finally, finally get to watch Tiger Woods once more on a golf course. Only this time getting, getting to, to talk shit to Justin Thomas, which is going to be hilarious. Um, but, yeah. before, but before that, before we get into anything, we got to talk about the um, the elephant in the room, or or in this case, the tiger in the room. Victor Hovland has, has won his second straight Hero World Challenge. This is the fourth animal-related trophy he's won in the last two years. He went back-to-back at Mayakoba in 2020 and 21, and, well, sorry, yeah, 2020 and 2021, and now back-to-back at the Hero World Challenge in 2021-22. Kyle. I think Victor Hovland is uh he, he's got that he's got that like Ace Ventura gene in him um to just dominate creature crown events. Yeah, I was I was I saw this uh and I'll I'll put this in our, our private chat for the opening when we segue back. There's a fun thing I sent you on Instagram. I don't know if you saw it the no, other day. Not, actually. Um that kind of ties in with baseball and golf. But uh I saw the the Dr. Doolittle stuff about Victor Hovland and obviously to stay on brand with us I think we need to call him the Creature King. Yeah, pretty accurate. Um I live bet Victor Hovland on the third round on Saturday to win the round and win. 
Uh, so that was sensational because he was not, I don't think he was the leader yet when I bet him to win the whole thing. Um, but he was, I think he was second for both, but live bet it. Nice little, nice little sprinkle, sprinkle. So that was fun. Uh, I had to do it for the brand and the odds were too good. Like he was plus 220 and plus 200 on both of them. I was like, that's too good for somebody who dominates animal trophy events. So, uh, yeah, Victor, did they like, do they just produce a new looking trophy for the, the lizard one every year, the iguana? No. So that was (laughs) because I was like, Oh, that one's like, (laughs) that one's like camouflaged. Yeah, no, the uh, the first one he won was a trophy they had, had for years, and it looked like a deformed just glob was just kind of like thrown onto a thrown onto a. It looked like all the paint wore off of it. I, it might have honestly. I, I I don't really know. The event's been around like forever, uh, but they must have like repainted it or like like got a new one for twenty twenty one because Russell Henley has, has the has the same one. So yes, it doesn't look perfect, but uh, it looks like one of those models that when you go to, uh, you know, like a hobby store, like an arts and craft store. And they're just white, but it's like made for you to paint, and it's like paint by number. Yeah, that's what the the 2020 version of the trophy looks yeah, like. It, 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 it's like the um the ceramic stuff. You go to like a a campground, and they have like ceramic day, and it's yes. Uh, you can buy the ceramic thing and like paint it whatever it is. You think but... Victor Hovland took that home and painted it with lightning bolts? Uh, if he did, <laughs> he was listening to some heavy metal shit while doing it. <laughs> could, could you imagine like Victor Hovland? I feel like um. There has to be like some sort of meme about this in some old movie or something where it's like the guy who's like a little softy and is like in the corner like painting, but then like it, like he has the headphones on and you're like, hey, well, hey, what are you listening to? And he's like, oh, here you go. And you put it on. It's like, Wah! I always think of Victor Hovland like saying like he's the type of person that if he was on Twitter would tweet that the alien ant farm cover of uh smooth criminal is better than michael vicks or michael jackson's version i think victor hovland if he was to sing uh at, at a bar it would have to be like duality by slipknot no it's uh it's papa roach uh <laughs> cut my life into pieces oh, uh... <laughs> this is my last resort and then he like points to somebody to hit the guitar and drum riffs <laughs> so vacation, no breathing you know what? Um, That's his go-to. Let's just swing back to this whole baseball thing. I just saw what you sent me, and I think it's actually something really funny. So, um, I forget who was with, talking about it, but golfers with walk-up songs. Uh, a certain podcast. Let me uh, properly accredit them to give them. The, yeah, shout out to them because it's here. a good conversation um, too. Oh, the uh, the Breakfast Balls podcast, which by the way, in in competition to get in the hole is probably also one of the best names of a golf oh, podcast. Yeah. Um, they're, Let, they're let's collab, boys. Honestly, please. Um, so yeah, so they had mentioned like like golf golf golfers need walk up songs, and actually they do do that on uh, for the Zurich Classic. Um, golfers do have walk up songs. Actually, uh, one of the one of the best ones, in my opinion, was Sam Burns and Billy Horschel. They walked out to, uh, oh God, is it? Oh, it's devastated by uh, by Joey Badass. That's it's amazing. A... I used to feel so devastated. Sam <laughs> Burns, Billy really Horschel, the old man, just rolling out to the song. What a weapon! <laughs> oh, that's good. And all of a sudden, like 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 the smoke just fucking shoots out. It's like, <laughs> and it's like Billy Horschel's like, yeah. <laughs> The the way that they did it with uh you know Bryson teeing off perfectly to a base drop, like it, it is a good question like to to ask like why uh, of all leagues that you would think would be doing it, why is Liv not doing this? Uh, it well at least for like the first tee, like you know what I mean? Like that that would make yeah, the most that sense. sense. No, no, but, but like it, 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 would, it would totally make sense. Considering also, I think uh, in Jersey they had they had the chain smokers perform the night prior, or like supposed to perform the night prior at, at like the social event. Why not just like have the chain smokers just like right. play some bops? That'd be incredible. Like I feel like you want to attract, you know, golf is trying to bring in this younger demographic and everything. That's something that I feel like would bring in 
not only a younger demographic, but then like our age group of, of yeah people that aren't necessarily, you know, your golf fans, but bring in more casual people. Cause it's like, Oh, that guy likes the same music I do. Or like that guy gets pumped up by the same artist I do. Like, I feel like it would make so much sense and it would be so cool for the event to just be like, bang, here it is. Um, what would your walk up song be? I think you probably already know uh, what it would be. Um, from back playing both high school baseball and intramural softball uh, in college, pretty, pretty standard. <laughs> oh, true. That makes what sense. What it was. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. Um, that makes sense. Although, actually, th- there was another really good one uh, th- th- that I did for a little bit. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, I was, I'm not from Brooklyn, but my family's heritage uh, hails from Brooklyn, very uh, uber Italian Americans, uh, all from the Brooklyn area. Uh, so my walk-up song was Brooklyn We Go Hard by nice. Jay-Z, um, which is it's just an absolute classic. But there was actually, there was a a specific part of the song that I used. Hold on, wait. Let, let me let me let me uh pull it up. Oh man, it was like, it was so good. I right, I I'll I'll go to you though. What was your, what, what would be yours? Um, there's a few that I feel like I could use. I'm like scrolling just through my uh my list of music here. Um, my shot from Hamilton would be a great one. <laughs> That would be unreal. Um, looking through my artists, though. Let's see. Um, no, nah, I would probably go with um, the drop from Burn the House Down by AJR. That's a really good one, too. That's a banger. Uh, all right, so 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 this is what I used to play uh, for a little bit, only in, in a mural. So high school was all Return of the Mac, um, just because it made sense. This though was my intramural for like one game, and I I did it. Oh, because it, it was the championship game, and I was like, I want to like really like go hard uh, and encapsulate like me. So it was this. That's probably one of the greatest rap lyrics of all time. That's hilarious. I jack, I rob, I sin. Oh man, I'm Jackie Robinson. Amazing. Also incredibly fitting that the uh, the Brooklyn boys, Jay Z, Steve McAvoy, and Jackie Robinson all kind of just came together. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> I think American Idiot would also be incredible. That would be great. Um, there's so many that I can honestly go back on. Uh, a friend of mine back in back in school, his was Centerfold by the Jay Gills Band. Okay. That one, that, that one's classic. Um, uh, I, I gotta think. There were so many good ones. There's a really good country song that I would actually. That I would. Oh, um, it's actually. It, it was Pete Alonzo's walk song. It's called "Welcome to the Show" by uh, by Cody Johnson. That's a, that's a really good one that I would definitely do. Um, I, you know, there's a lot of different songs that you could like use because, just like for different scenarios, I feel like they all make sense. Yeah. But I would definitely say those two, I mean, they were the ones that I used to always use. Um, but otherwise, oh, I think Wow by Pulse Malone. Just the beat would be amazing. Yeah, that would be good too. Or like, I gotta think of, of something else that, that would be like bomb. Disco um, Inferno, but by 50 Cent would be kind of hard. <laughs> <laughs> Little mama, show you how to move it. Oh, hey, put your back into it. There has to be more too. Um, I'm looking at, at my uh, my rap playlists. Anything Kendrick Lamar? I think. Yeah, really I was good. just gonna say Kendrick. Oh, another classic Jay Z song though. Yeah, Art of the City. The, 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 that's another absolute classic. Uh, no Church in the Wild. If you want to get get like really crazy, the one that the the podcast said. I'm blanking on their name again. Um, but they, I'm pretty sure they said Fireman by Lil Wayne. Yeah, Fireman. That's, that's, that's just would unbelievable. That, that, that would, would go great. stupid hard. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Why is that not a golfer's nickname yet either? 
What, fireman? The fireman? That'd be so hard. I don't know who you'd call the fireman, though. Yeah, it, we'll, it'll come to us, and then we'll put it on a shirt. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, at some point. Um, it very well, it very well could be, could be uh, 20. Oh, minutes. you know what a great walk-up song would be? Voodoo Child. No, you know what you know what would be the most elite would be Tony Finau going out off the Hawaiian roller coaster ride. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most critically underrated song in the history a, of mankind. No, it's a banger. It's and a the banger. Ch- the children's choir makes it ten it's times better. So good. Voodoo Child though by Jimi Hendrix would be a banger of a walk up song. That freaking guitar riff in the beginning. No, sh- shut up. It's this. YouTube's going to demonetize us and copyright no claim us. Yeah, go ahead and sing it yourself. Oh my god. Sorry. <laughs> I-, I had to. Oh, but by the way, speaking of Hawaiian music, bro, Molly Kaliki Maka by Bing Crosby. Great song. An elite Christmas song. Great right, song. We're we're already a half hour in and we're we're just tangenting. Tangent thing? Is that a, is that a last word? one? Last one? Sunflower. Uh, Post Malone. Spider Verse. Mm. It's just a banger. How much of a meme would it be to do Hootie and the Blowfishes? Oh, that's not a meme at all. I, I love Hootie. I, I want to be with you. Yep. Give it to me all day and twice on Sunday. Actually, hip, hip to be square by Huey Lewis in the news. <laughs> Solely because I watched American Psycho for the 18th time. The uh, Last night. By the way, you have two early wins already, uh, and this hasn't happened like in the history of the show. It took me and Ben months to get multiple wins. I think I have two in my career, and I've been doing this now for at least 60 episodes. Um, and then there's you, who just goes, oh, Tony Fino, oh, Victor Hobbit, easy money. Uh, so shout out to you. In the great words of the legend himself, Hawk Harrelson, you can put it on the board. Yes. You know what else you can put on the board? You can put on the board Rory McIlroy pissing the shit out of Greg Norman. <laughs> uh, so this past week, Rory McIlroy uh, apparently talked to Greg Norman, had a conversation, and uh, things didn't go um, so well. He spoke to the Sunday Independent in Ireland uh, on, over the weekend. had a lengthy had a lengthy interview that he said that he spoke. With Greg Norman, of course, CEO, CEO and commissioner of Live Golf, and said that there was um, there was some tension and there there was some talking that uh, he said Greg Norman had brainwashed remarks. Uh, he is a hypocrite. He's a liar. And then he he actually wound up saying this uh, to the media during the DP World Tour event uh, last week. From whatever happens with those two things, there's there's a few things that I would like to see on. The live side that needs to happen i think greg needs to go i think he needs to just exit stage left and look he's he's made his mark but i think now is the right time to, to sort of say look you've you know you've got this thing off the ground but no one's going to talk and unless you know there's an adult in the room that can actually try to mend fences um and if those two things happen then things can things can happen but right now um, it's a stalemate because it, there can't be any other way. So hopefully something can happen. Who knows? But but right now, um, I think the the two separate entities, PJ Tour, European Tour, and Live, they're just going to keep going both their separate ways, and and one's a very different product to the other, and they're just going to keep going until you know, something happens and whether that's in the, the hands of a court or a judge or if something else happens along the way, no one really knows. But right now, it seems like it's just a bit of a stalemate. He went on to further say, quote, I thought, you know what? I'm going to make make it my business now to be to be as much of a pain in the ass, in his ass, as possible, talking about Greg Norman and then saying that um, that literally, like Greg Norman is a child and that someone else has to step in and in order to try and mend fences. And the only way it'll happen is if the two lawsuits between the PGA Tour and, and Live Golf, and then now in February, Live Golf will go on trial against the DP World Tour. Uh, those must settle and Greg must go. Um, Norman told British Magazine Today Golf, I pay zero attention to McElroy and Woods, right? They have their agenda for whatever reason. They're saying whatever they want to say. It has no bearing or effect on me. I'm going to be with Live for a long, long period of time. 
doesn't seem like we're going to be getting any sort of uh, resolvement uh, anytime soon. And I think this is going to continue pushing itself further and further and further until we kind of see some sort of focus uh, come into play, whether it be, like Rory said, a judge or a jury or, or, or some kind of um, legal retribution, even very well could be a, a issue of if the PGA Tour is uh, found guilty of, of monopolization and, and, uh, and unfair labor practices to their employees over the last however many years, we could very well see even a boost for Liv. So just some news there. Don't really know exactly what's going to happen. What do you make of it, Kyle? I said it the last time we talked about Liv. I'll say it every time we talk about Liv. <laughs> Broken like, record. Here we go. Scratch, scratch. It's like. just going to continue on and on. And we've said it a number of times on this show. It's to the point where these two entities, I feel like, are just going to have to learn how to slap the coexist bumper sticker on themselves and coexist. Yeah. I mean, it's... The only problem is, is that, and I, I don't think Greg's going to go anywhere. I think he's stuck here for a while. This is now his baby. He went between him and Phil went from will be on or could have been on one of the golf golf Mount Rushmore's as one of the top players to ever live, and then <laughs> yeah puns. Uh, and now, I mean, it kind of makes sense that Phil Mickelson be the successor to Greg Norman once things uh, wind out. Now Greg's in his seventies; he's going to only get older. I mean, it's a matter of time before Greg Norman hangs it up and Phil Mickelson takes over. I think that, that kind of makes sense. And he'd be the CEO and commissioner of this brand and Greg Norman kind of holds face for as long as possible. And I think until um, either one or both of them go, we'll have to see what happens. I think things are really going to kind of kick into gear, though, come April with the Masters because now this is the last event that – has not made a decision yet. Obviously, the U.S. Open allowed live players to play. The the Open um, did not allow live players to play. Sorry, did allow some to play, not, not all. Uh, many said they weren't going to jump ship until after the Open, like Cameron Smith, uh, because they wanted to um, play the Open. And, of course, Cameron Smith won. And so we'll see what happens in April. I think that's really the only thing that, uh, that, that I could say. But one thing the PGA Tour is, in fact, doing that is kind of – Kicking uh, off, kicking, starting off a wild swing of changes is on-site betting. You know, not you, you think PGA Tour, and this kind of loops back to our whole uh, walk-up song uh, debate. Um, very gentlemanly sport that like PGA Tour wouldn't really adopt walk-out songs. The only reason why for the Zurich is because it's like a team event and it's like fun. But very much to the book. Welcome in this player, give their accolades, they tee off and they go on. Um, the gentleman's game is now becoming a little bit, little less, more gentlemanly. And there's only one place that you can pilot something like on-site betting. And it's a TPC Scottsdale right outside the stadium. Yeah, that's better paradise. <laughs> I cannot wait for like, for someone around the turn, it, it, like, Jordan Spieth rounds the turn. He's on the hole before the stadium. Everyone clears out, goes to the seven ticket windows they have, and is just slamming Jordan Spieth hole in ones. The For odd the will not know what the fuck's going on. It's gonna be very yeah. funny. And <laughs> b before we before yeah. we keep this going, you guys, when you're ready to go on site bet at a PGA tour event, can do it in style with our friends. At PHI Apparel Company. Damn That's right. what we call an ad segue. <laughs> uh, it's our merch partners, the official merch partner of Underground Sports Philadelphia. Steve, I think by the time everybody's listening to this, the one shirt we teased a couple weeks ago on the show will be live. Oh, boy. So, uh, for the people at home who may have missed it, uh, hopefully by the time you guys are listening to this, we will have... Uh, what we're calling like our hype beast collection of merch dropping across the board and everything will be available by the weekend. Um, but we have a, uh, a zoo animal, if you will crossover event, uh, with our lovely, uh, merch partners at PHI apparel company. And there's no doubt with their unique designs, with you guys rocking the official podcast merch, you're going to stand out on the course 
at your your clubhouse, at the bar, wherever you may be taking in the PGA Tour, live golf, whatever you, your your golf of choice is, do it while rocking our merch. You guys can go to phiapparel.co and use code UNDERGROUND for 10% off your order. Uh, that's phiapparel.co, code UNDERGROUND for 10% off your order. The merch is great, Steve. I had a, uh, I ordered just the, the Underground Sports logo shirt. Came in this weekend. The quality of the shirt is some, it is the best quality merch we've ever had here, um, which has me very excited. Plus, I've been saying it on all the shows that this is true. It's true for getting the hole, top bins, and streamer season. This is first edition merch across the board. This is the first time this podcast has ever had merch. So go get your merch. Steve, we did a live stream on Friday night, myself and DJ, for the NLL season opener. Sold sold three items of merch during the live stream. So it's that simple. Go get your merch. Like, if you order it now, it will be available. It will come to you by Christmas. Like, I ordered it on November 28th. It got to me uh, the following week. So, like, go get your merch. I'll tell you right now. I've already put out this poll, and people are saying that I should buy this Tony Finau jacket. I will buy one and give one away if we sell 10 Get in the Hole shirts. There ten. it is. You got to tweet tweet the receipt. Hashtag tweet receipt. <laughs> Hashtag tweet receipt. I love that. Let us know. Show us what you get. Uh, we'll retweet that thing. But, yeah, go get your merch. Uh, right now, just the classic logo tees for all of our podcasts is available. Uh, but hopefully by the end of the weekend, all of the Hype Beast collection, which I think is like seven new pieces of merch, will be available. So go get that stuff. On-site <laughs> betting, though, Steve, do you think it'll be available anywhere else? So this, so this is the pilot. Uh, as Jay Monahan said, as well as us saying this now we're with PHI Power Crow, it's a pretty big deal. Um, we'll start at TPC, Scotts, TPC Scottsdale. Uh, one thing I found really weird, though, it's... So, so they're partnering with DraftKings. They're going to open up the sports books. So the, what? That's the DraftKings TV commercial. Oh, what, whatever. I use Fandle. Um, not a sponsor. No free ads. It's gonna. So the sports book is going to be located at the venue. It opened up on Monday. It'll be open all day long, every single day. We'll feature. Hold on. We'll, we'll feature twelve thousand square feet, which is like nuts. Uh, 3,100 foot feet worth of screens. It'll have seven ticketing windows uh, and multiple other uh, four, 40 bedding kiosks, uh, outdoor patio, video screens, VIP, VIP commanders, and fire pits. Although it will not be open the week of the Waste Management Phoenix Open, which will be it'll be used for hospitality reasons. I don't really know what that like entails. We'll see. Maybe there is betting. Regardless, um, you can bet on all sports while you're there, though. So pretty cool, uh, very similar to what you see at, at, at a lot of other places, especially uh, in Arizona. Actually, they're apparently like they're they've been the place for all of these um, betting kiosks. Uh, other Arizona sporting event, sporting venues that have these uh, sports books: State Farm Stadium, Footprint Center, Chase Field, and the Phoenix Raceway. Now they're adding on Scottsdale to another lengthy line <coughs> of partners. So pretty cool to see how. Uh, how things will go. We'll see how, how things jump off at the end. But with that being said, we're going to take a short break. We come back. The match number seven, the Young Guns versus the Goats. We have the scouting the field. We're talking about every single golfer, their, their positives, their negatives, how they're going into this event, what form they're in, and what should you look out for. We also have to have plenty of prop bets. And, of course, we're going to give you our winning picks this week for the match number seven, Steve McAvoy, KB, right here. On the Getting Old Podcast, don't go anywhere. The Pelican Golf Club plays host to match number seven. Rory McIlroy and Tiger Woods take on Justin Thomas and Jordan Spieth. And we are here to break it all down for you right here on the Get In The Whole Podcast. I sound like Jim Nance. And that was great. Here we go, Jim! Let's get ready to rumble! Oh, this is going to be huge, Jim! <laughs> this is going to be really huge, Jim. <laughs> December 10th, Bel Air, Florida, the Pelican Golf Club, par 77,000 yards. We're cutting it down all the way though, though, to 12 holes, including the 12th hole, the Lamborghini hole. The PGA, the LPGA Tour hosts, hosts at the Pelican Club every single year. 
Uh, Nellie Corda has won this event multiple times. She sat down with, with Golf Channel and talked about what it takes to win at the Pelican Club. And the biggest thing is going to be that final hole, the 12th, the par three, the Lamborghini hole, which on the, on the LPGA Tour, if you get a hole in one, you win a Lamborghini. I don't know if they're going to do huge for the brand. I don't know if they're going to do the same thing for this event. However, uh, Saturday is going to be abs- going to be absolutely ridiculous. Twelve holes. The formats are going to be better ball match play, and as always, we'll have a fun tone with all the money going to charity. It will uh, all be in uh, in support of Hurricane Ian relief. Um, of course, down in Florida, the hurricanes have been dastardly to, to say the very least. So getting this, so getting the much needed support is going to be uh, a huge jump. This is Wood's third appearance in the match, and of course, this goes all the way back to his initial match against Phil Mickelson. Boo! Way back in the day when when the match was like first a thing, and it's like kind of crazy how this it's happened. evolved. It, this went from 2018 to the pandemic, and all of a sudden it, it had quarterbacks, and then it had all quarterbacks, and then it had Steph Curry in it, and then it had Charles Barkley in it, and now we're finally back to golf roots, straight up golfers. We also ha- had the Bryson Brooks debate settled where they gave a little bro hug. Uh, I think this is honestly the best one of all. Just had an idea pop in my head. Go ahead. Are you are you free? Sa- are are you home Saturday? I'm going to decorate a tree with with the girlfriend. Are you home during the match on Saturday? Um, possibly because the match this year will start at six o'clock under the lights at the Pelican Club. So possibly. Should we live stream? If I am available, I one thousand percent will. Follow us at Getting the Whole Pod socials. You'll know if we'll have a stream. And it, and if I'm not there, maybe Ben Piero's there. Hey, also speaking of Ben, shout out to Ben. Been on fire. Shout out to the boy. Bogey y'all y'all free. understand why I've been sitting in this chair right now? Bogey free T five. My man is been? on a mission. Shout out to the boy. Pretty fire, honestly. Like actually, like incredible. Um, so yeah, so 12 holes under the lights, better ball match play format. With that being said, we got to talk players and we're going to go down the line, give you every single golfer in the field. There's only four, of course, but there are also four historically amazing players. And we start with probably the least, uh, the least valuable, I guess you could say like, like looking at a valuableness scale and like, like famous scale. How Jordan Speed is the last one on this list is like kind of amazing. Um, as you all know, Jordan Speed 2017 almost almost did something that no one but Tiger Woods has ever done and win the career Grand Slam in one year. Literally hit the Grand Slam. Uh, hasn't necessarily been uh, old Jordan Speed over the last few years. He's changed his swing. He's hired a new swing coach. He's changed up a lot of things over the last few years. Won the RBC Heritage by um, commanding five strokes his last win out. Has not played in this fall swing. Comes in, though, well-prepared. Has been playing a lot down in Texas, down by his home. Has apparently been all over on TPC San Antonio, which is one of the hardest golf courses in, in, in the state of Texas. Has plenty of experience and is very much ready to get right into this. If you want to talk, like, the simple stuff for the casual golfer who doesn't really, like, watch anything except for, like, except for like, like the match, um, Getting to know Jordan Spieth, uh, A, he's one of the best putters on the planet. Uh, he has the best putting percentage at every single major, particularly at Augusta National, than any golfer. Uh, I believe last year he went into Augusta as, I think he was gaining more than four strokes on everyone in in his career putting numbers. Like he had made like 48 eagles, had made like a, like a ridiculous sum, sum of a putts. It was like him, Justin Rose, and then the next like low for person was like 10 strokes behind. Um, so Jordan Speed is one of the best putters on tour. There's the recurring meme of you that, that you see him. Does the uh, the left hand low, close your eyes, turn away like Michael Jordan, and uh, and, and hit his putt. That's kind of his thing. Um, as of late, with his swing changes, has gotten a lot longer, but has gotten a little more erratic. He has much more of like an over and like out swing kind of pattern, where it's not as uh, not as Rory or Tiger esque, where it's a lot more of like a even plane. It's a lot more a little erratic. Um, but with that being said, like he's been known for exceptional approach play. He's been known for, for his great putting. And being that it's the best ball format, he, he hits it very long, as is, as, the, as the teammate Justin Thomas. Both of them kind of have the same game to a degree, but JT is just eons right now stronger. 
Uh, he hits it far. He hits it straight. He kind of does everything just right. Uh, he is arguably, next to Colin Morikawa, the best approach player in golf history over the last 20-some-odd years. Uh, and that's including Tiger in, it, in these talks. like absolutely just, just ridiculous at golf. Um, the approach game here at Pelican is going to be incredibly important. So I'm looking out for JT specifically. If he can get opportunities on approach shots, anywhere from a five iron down, he's phenomenal. He'll get a few within 10 feet. If there's a situation where you see Justin Thomas and Jordan Spieth going, sorry, it's match play. So, so, so the, they're all, they're all playing their own ball. But if there's a situation where you see Justin, uh, Justin Thomas hitting it to 10 feet, playing that best ball and Jordan Spieth g- g- gets a putt from inside proximity, that's like ridiculous. Um, so I wouldn't count out particularly the JT Jordan Spieth combo because both are so exceptionally talented and there isn't a lot of necessarily pressure on them. Like there would be in a PGA tour event, they're simply going out and playing. Also their childhood friends. There's the photos of them that you see literally every single tournament that they're, they're involved. Um, so yeah, that's the young guns, but really the story comes down to the two guys that are headlining the event and they, and they both happen to be on the same team. Rory McIlroy has had the greatest year of his entire career in the last decade. How is it going to translate to a 12-round golf match? Well, I'll tell you this pretty simply. As of right now, over the last 12 months, he is number one in driving distance. He's number one in driving accuracy. He's number two in strokes gained approach. He's number five in strokes gained putting. And he's number one strokes gained tee degree by over five strokes. He's amazing. And he fired his swing coach about a year and a half ago. He got back to his old roots back when he was a little little young lad in Northern Ireland, just dominating tournaments. And he's finally back to what everyone wanted him to be. On top of that, he's also fighting Greg Norman tooth and nail. I don't know what to not expect from Rory, to be honest with you. I think he does everything right. He does everything well. And barring some ridiculous mishap, I... There's nothing bad that I could say about Rory's game. Finally, and Kyle, I will let you give comments on on all these guys, but we're going to really kind of comment here on the real guy, the guy who who everyone's going to want to watch, the big cat, Eldrick Tiger Woods. We don't know anything. Like, simply put, we know nothing. Uh, We know that he played the Open and shot like a 76, which – for a guy who nine months prior, twelve months prior, was in a, a car accident, or no, no, sorry, over a year, over a year and a half prior, was in a car accident that almost left him without legs. Pretty impressive. Uh, didn't play this past week at the, at the Hero because of plantar fasciitis. He will be playing this week. Of course, he'll have the golf cart, which is a pretty good handicap for him, which will be nice. Uh, he said in an interview, "I can hit any shot you want. I just can't walk," which is kind of the bosses flex on the planet but yeah we don't really know anything about tiger's game right now he said in an interview recently practicing with charlie that charlie's now out driving him which is like kind of nuts uh however however charlie still can't beat him which shows that tiger's probably still there teetering on excellent with his approach game and his putting has been a bit of a question mark wasn't great at augusta wasn't great at the open wasn't incredible at the pga it was kind of a teeter teeter on both ends of the spectrum, would hit it from 20 feet, would miss it from five feet. So we didn't really know exactly what was coming in with Tiger, but what we do know is most likely exceptional ball striking and ability to get the, to get it close. The approach game just won't stop. The question is going to be the driver and the putter. How will both react? The putter has obviously been one of his strong suits his entire career. It's been one of the reasons why he's won, won so many events and why he's been so clutch, as well as his approach shot, uh, at short game, long game, whatever, he, whatever it happens to be. But again, we simply just don't know a Tiger Woods quite yet. And I will now stop my rant and open the floor to you. Uh, Just a little bit of public knowledge here before I continue. Uh, I have a great thing for you and I as creators uh, that I just noticed popped out. You can now post to Instagram from a computer. Oh, no way. (laughs) That's amazing. Amazing. Game changer. (laughs) Uh, but yeah, I mean, overall, like, uh, like you said, like th- we agreed on this when it got announced, like this is the best on paper. The match has been presented to us. Um, 
I mean, to have these four guys, and like you said, Jordan Spieth being like the worst one, air quotes for the people not watching on YouTube, um, is bonkers. Like, these are four guys who, like, over the last decade are, like, just legends. Yeah. And they're going to, you know, go out under the lights, which I think is the coolest aspect of this entire thing, and just have fun going toe-to-toe with each other for, for 12 holes. Like, it's going to be pure entertainment across the board while getting to watch four guys who, like, people probably a little bit early, like, a little bit younger than us all the way through to, you know, dads, grandfathers, and everything have watched these guys from Jump Street yeah, just go out and, like, revolutionize, like, the fun of the sport and do stuff that dads and grandpas and now like our generation are doing on the golf course was just going out shooting the shit with your friends like what what's what's amazing to me is when you look at these four players right it all started with tiger in in the late 90s he came in was immediately a, a worldwide success in 2001 he had more wins than he did i think like he had more wins than he did any other like finish like, he had, like, 11 wins. Something ridiculous. As Tiger got older, Rory came in. Rory came in in, like, 05. That's got crazy. incredible. Was an icon as an amateur, just beating up on PGA Tour players. Jack Nicholas said he's, said he's the greatest golfer I've ever seen, and he's, like, 12. Um, then Jordan Spieth showed up and won three majors in 2016-17 or 2015, whatever it was. Him and Ricky Fowler were like the guys. Mm-hmm. And then Justin Thomas graduated college in 2016, 2017-ish, and has been just an absolute monster along with along with guys like like Bryson who graduated with him in 2016, like the studs of the game. And they were they were they were really the guys who <coughs> all four of them have kind of revolutionized the game in their own way. Like you look at, at the era of the top players ever. Now, granted, there's more parity now than ever, but the 2010s has all, has been these four guys, and even now the 2020s is still these four guys. That's why, of course, Tiger has been falling off a bit, but still 2019 won the Masters. So all four are just absolute legends. With that being said, there's only one way to go about analyzing this event, aside from just talking about the players itself, talking about what's going to happen on the course. And with that, we're talking prop bets. Kyle, give me the ad read. It's from our friends over at Pickup. You guys can go to playpickup.com, start playing the hottest headlines in sports, which will probably include the match. You can play NFL props, MLB free agency props, NBA, NHL. Uh, when it, They have a big partnership with NASCAR. When that rolls back around in February, you'll be able to play all your NASCAR props. College football playoff got announced. Go in on the college football playoffs. NCAA basketball is here, uh, both men and women. You can play all the props. It's created by content creators like myself and Steve. All you got to do is sign up with your phone number. There's no email. There's no password to remember. As long as you know your phone number, you can get in to your account. You rack up points on your fan profiles when you get props correct, and it's a joint thing. So whoever goes in and says yes with you, you all get those points divvied up. Whoever says no, and maybe it's less, and you're one of those no people, you get more points. So it's You know, however you're feeling. So go to playpickup.com, rack up those points on your fan profiles, and then cash them in for prizes on the pickup marketplace. That's playpickup.com. And you can play all of these this week. I'm sending I'm sending these out literally tonight to bet on. And we lead with this. In in the last two iterations of the match, none prior, has a team gone three up, meaning that, that they're leading, of course, by three holes within the match. KB, at any point, yes or no, we will see a team be three up. I think it's tough to gauge just because it is so different from years past. Like, it is only 12 holes, so there's more of, like, a limited opportunity for it to happen. Um, Would it surprise me if it does happen? No, but I'm going to say no. I'm actually going to say yes. And my reasoning is a bit erratic, and I'll explain why. I think specifically it will be Jordan and JT. They're going to start off hotter in the beginning. 
go up by three in the first five holes. So by half, they'll be up by three. I think Tiger is going to take a little bit. He's going to be a little, like, lagged. I think he has to kind of get his footing. It'll be a lot on Rory in the first few holes, but I think between Spieth and JT, they're going to be able to get off to a really hot start, go three up. However, I do still think that this is going to be a much closer battle than than, than this prop making it out to be, which, which segues in very well to number two. The winning team to win by two holes. Every single iteration of the match, someone's won by at least two holes. Do we see someone win, see a team win by two or more holes? I mean, the numbers say yes. And as uh, Jamel Hill and Michael Smith once said, numbers never lie. So it's give a great, me a yes. great show. It's a fantastic show. I don't know why they took it off the air. Uh, I'm going to agree. I think someone will win. Someone will win by two holes. And it's the exact opposite of what I said in the last bit. I think there's a good chance that Rory and Tiger might actually win because in the second half, they're going to be just like all over the place and they're going to be pin hunting and going nuts. We've seen Rory McIlroy pin hunt. It's like the scary sight. It's like me playing 2k. Like it, it, it's just like, like you, you are specifically aiming for the pin every single time and you're landing it within five feet. It's ridiculous. That final hole, the 12th hole, the Lambo hole. Yes or no? Will we see a hole in one? There's no odds posted on, 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 on any sports book, but if I had to imagine, it's somewhere at least plus 1,000. Kimmy for the brand, yes. Look, 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 Lamborghini Mercy. Great song. Give it to me. Yes. I think that, I think there will be a hole in one. Speaking of hole in ones, also shout out to Kevin Kisner hitting a hole in one this past week. Fats. Props to him. Also, J- J- Justin Thomas sat it's like within like two feet. Doing it for the brand. Um, if Tiger if Tiger hits a hole in one, I'll, I'll shave my head. On, on this hole, if he hits a hole in one, I will shave my head. Yeah, there it is. The live references we got to talk about them. Uh, when you have when you have Rory and Tiger in the same event, I feel like you have to like someone someone's gonna bring it up. And if Charles Barkley's on the broadcast, he's a knucklehead. <laughs> Yeah, he is a knucklehead. And he's probably going to bring it up multiple times and Rory's going to get pissed off, uh, which also might actually help the the first prop uh, of JT. And hey, Chuck, I don't want to talk golf. about live golf anymore. <laughs> I don't want to talk about live golf. I'm here I'm here to play for the tur. I freaking love Rory's, uh, Rory's accent. Yes. How about for Greg Norman or live references overall in the entire match over under six and a half? Trying to gauge this because that's like a high number. Six and a half is pretty high when you break it down to twelve holes. Like that's like two references this is also, per hole. This is all well. Hold on, this is including the pregame too. Okay, okay, okay. So pregame commentary and during the match. So that's one reference a hole, or one reference every four holes if there's at least three in the commentary. I'm gonna say under because I think on the. The pregame, they'll bring it up twice, okay. and then it'll be like once or twice more throughout the uh, actual like gameplay. Now, they're having a media day for the match prior to this. I think there will be some questions surrounding Liv then. So that'll help my under. I agree with you on that, on the under here. But this one, the post-round Liv references, over under one and a half, I'm very confident that you very well might get to in the post-round interviews, in the post-game commentary, if they bring Rory on specifically for an interview, whoever it is. They might even ask JT and Speed. I don't really know, but I, I'm very confident in the over here. I'm going to say under again. Ooh, okay. Because post, post-round, post like, I don't know. Some just tells me they're going to be more focused on, like, everything that's actually going on and trying to like keep the conversation about the match and like yeah. the broadcast and everything from a, I, and I'm also thinking from like an advertiser perspective as well. Like they're going to want to try to appease those people. And like, how much do you want, you know, your, your big broadcast that you're advertising on talking about a product that's not on the broad, like on the actual Thanks, broadcast. So I'm going to say under, but it wouldn't surprise me if it does go over. But I'm going to say under. Just to play against you, I'm going to take the over here. Uh, just to play fun little double advocate. Finally, we have to have beer money. We have to talk about that. There's only one bet to make this week, guys. But we're going to do it right here on Beer Money. Brought to you by our friends over at Kenwood Beer. 
Philadelphia's Ultimate Light Beer just announced a new and improved 15-pack carry case. Pretty freaking lit. Looks awesome. The Get packaging hand, looks great. Get your hands like, on Ice Cold Kenny. Like, now, find that Kenny tracker. Get your hands on some Kennys. And let's drop in. Yeah, the, 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 the Kennys look... The Kenny packaging I'm looking at right now, like... It's beautiful. It's a refresh, not a rebrand. It looks great. Uh, it pops. It's available uh at your local liquor stores and you can use the kenny tracker at kenwoodbeer.com to see who's got it on tap in Damn the philadelphia right. area for the match for any occasion uh crack open a nice cold kenny this this holiday season uh but you gotta be 21 or older to do so and of course please drink responsibly wait hold on this is a joke the mets have signed their replay analyst harrison friedland to a contract extension banana banana I don't. All right. Well, I I don't know what that means, but uh, whatever it happens to be, um, <laughs> uh, a Roto Wire reporter just tweeted out: the Red Sox too are still waiting to hear back on whether Aaron Judge will accept their four-year, fifty-six million dollar offer. Are we sure that's Aaron or Arson? <laughs> it very well could be Arson. Um. All right. There was some odds movement here, actually. Uh, beginning of the week, as of yesterday, it was even money, minus 110 for both sides. The numbers have changed. Spieth and JT, minus 130 to the GOATs, plus 105. What do you think? Give hmm. us some insight and some little analysis here before I give you my spiel. I don't like that, because uh, that means a bunch of people are putting money on JT and Spieth. So if you want to put money on that, I'd say go do it now. Um, Man, is that everywhere? I'm seeing. Uh, This is at both the Sportsbook in blue and the Sportsbook in green. By the way, to this Mets point here, uh, Harrison Freeland, the Mets led the majors in replay challenge success rate last year at 78%. So actually, this is a pretty dope signing when you think about it. That's unreal. That. The fact that the Mets beat writers are actually reporting this is ridiculous. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, this just tells me people saw those odds and were like, wow, I believe way more in JT and Jordan Spieth than I do in a Tiger-Rory combo. Um, I mean, I'd split your, your however you divvy up your your gambling i'd split it in half like sprinkle a little on both because either way like you're gonna be good um especially with plus odds with the way rory's been playing the last calendar year like if you want somebody to help carry a team why not rory yeah Um, uh, yeah how do you feel about it uh well if i'm gonna bet this i would probably put a unit on jt and speed and then a half unit on tiger and rory to balance out a little bit um, cause at, at the end of the day, both have, both have a great shot. There are two books as I'm using the website I used last week to see everything. I'm all seeing, all knowing, uh, there are two books right now that still have, wow, this is kind of crazy. They have tiger and Rory at minus minus one twenty five. Okay. And J- JT and Jordan Spieth at plus a hundo. At, at that point, if you don't mind splitting up your bets, I mean, I, I would just yeah. put, the, put, put the plus money on the uh, the bigger books and then whatever book, book that is. What, what's the color of that book? Uh, one of them is a shade of green, and one of them is the home of your good friend, Nick Costos. <laughs> Nick Costos! I fucking love that guy. <laughs> I, think, I think we need to get Nick Costos on the pod. I would love... You'd when, be like Spongebob when he sees Kevin for the first time. When, Hi, Nick. <laughs> when Bet Underground comes back and I am on full charge as like the golf guy, I want to get Nick Casos in for a guest spot. I don't care what it is. Honestly, it will probably wind up being NFL prop bets because he is the prop king uh, and all hail King Casos. Um, but love that guy. He also has the voice of a 16-year-old. But he's like 40. In the best way. Yes. But like he's like 40, and I thought forever he was like 25. 
Um, amazing though, King Cosmos. Um, here's the thing. Honestly, I probably wind up putting the money here on Rory and Tiger plus 105 and then putting the money on the plus value for JT and Spieth. If you're smart, if you're not smart and want to just stick to one book and just bet it straight, um, here's the way I, here's the way I'm kind of looking at this. Jordan Spieth hasn't played much over this fall swing, hasn't played a single event. JT played one event, uh, which I believe was the CJ Cup, finished 40th, I think. Spieth is still trying to hone in after winning the RBC Heritage last, what was it, June. Mm -hmm. Is still a little behind, still has a little work to do. Justin Thomas played, played his one event, has won a major in the last year, which is really impressive, has won a player's championship in the last two years, certainly has a lot of really good um, mantras going into this, and I think he is just a overall incredible golfer. I don't think that think there's, any, there's any, any reason to assume um, that there should be a problem here. Uh, also, Spieth did actually did go 5-0 and in the President's Cup, now that I'm thinking of it. So, has played impressively. Uh, Rory has just been nuts. Three wins, has had, I, I believe, no worse of finish than, than top 25 in, in the last eight months. Uh, he's going to be the biggest hitter on this course. Tiger is still up in the air, but the approach plays there. I will put the money on confidently, in this case, right now, on Tiger and Rory to win by two by two. And again, this goes back to what I was saying earlier. I think I think the young guys will go up early, go up after at, at half by three strokes. But I do believe that down the stretch, Tiger's gonna get kind of into his own. He has the golf cart, so his handicap is there. It's gonna help him out a lot. He has he has said everyone he won't he will not use the golf cart in any other event that, that he plays PGA tour. He's just doing it the cart here so he can Stay healthy and and then go play the PNC, which I believe he also will have a cart with Charlie. I think that the handicap there is going to help him immensely. I think Rory's going to play a exceptional game of golf, and I think Jordan might have a couple of mishaps that are going to put them in a bad spot that will give that one or two really good Rory or Tiger shots the advantage here. So I'm going to go actually Tiger and Rory to win by two. Tiger I shot sounds like some sort of extravagant beverage of choice it sounds like what a mountain dew flavor should be called or if charlie sheen came out with like some like ridiculous energy drink it'd be called the like like Ad adonis dna or like tiger bloodshot hey some alcohol company should just get on board with us and we can make tiger shots <laughs> you can like layer it with like orange and like black like kalua and uh and, and, and like orange like Quintron, whatever, maybe I don't know, but yeah, maybe just make an an orange colored like whiskey. I would go Tiger and Rory. I think it's a a really solid bet. Two strokes, take it to the bank. I think think that'll be your play. An hour and eight down. Final thoughts, KB, before we hit the road, Jack. Um, I'm going JT and Jordan Speed. By the way, Thank you. um, final thoughts, man. Uh, subscribe. To the pod. Yeah. Subscribe always. YouTube.com slash at underground sports Philadelphia. Get in the hole. Wherever you get your podcast, follow at get in the hole pod. Yo, streamer season, catch and get in the hole on Twitter. No. Slowly we're six followers behind. Slowly but surely. Happen. We're like Randy Orton slithering down the aisle. This can't happen, guys. Um but yeah, go follow at get in the hole pod. Um trying to think what did i see on my timeline this week that is a great final thought um let's see is it this no it was oh where did it go bro can you hurry up we'll give your final thought then I will. Um, PHI Power Co. released shirts already for Trey Turner, and they're beautiful. Yes, they are. Like, th this won't, like, like load out better, but, like, the ice tray is amazing. 
They're so good. That. A beautiful t-shirt. I'm not even a Phillies fan, and I kind of want to buy one. <laughs> like, God. Um, You know what? My final thought's going to go out to Aaron Judge. Uh, I'm proud of you for possibly leaving the Yankees. Uh, and a laugh to Yankees fans everywhere. Because you guys signed Brian Cashman for four more years. Four he, more years. And he is just following in the... Uh, following and biting the coattails of Hal Steinbrenner, whose father is shaking in his grave and rolling over because you don't want to go over the luxury tax? Embarrassment. Yeah. Embarrassment. Sell the franchise. This is the, Queens is New York now. It's like when the Brooklyn Nets for three years was like, oh, Brooklyn's the hub of New York. It's not Manhattan. Also, who wants to go to the Bronx? It's the Bronx. They have a higher crime 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 rate than, than Manhattan, and it smells worse than Staten Island. <laughs> Queens just has rats, but they're building a cool NYCFC stadium, so like it kind of is nice. Uh, Golf Digest just tweeted a fantastic on brand tweet for us. Talk to me. The bar tab after you make a hole in one. Oh, goose! <laughs> oh, talk goose. to me. Talk, talk to me. Talk to me, goose. By the way, awesome movie. I still have to see the new one. Really good. I saw, oh, I, final thought again. Shout out to the boy, Ben Pirro. Just a weapon. Academic He's, weapon. Unbelievable. Like, talk, talk to him nice. Guys. Go tweet nice things at Ben. DM him nice things on Instagram. Because he's a certified unit. While I'm on the PHI Apparel Co. train, that. Bang. Awesome. See you guys. Thanks for listening to Get in the Hole, the official golf podcast of Underground Sports Philadelphia. Catch us every week wherever you get your favorite podcasts, and be sure to like and subscribe on Apple, Spotify, and YouTube. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Get in the Hole Pod, and follow Underground Sports Philadelphia at Underground PHI. We'll see you next time, and remember, Get in the Hole!